Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special Codex Prime podcast, Code Extra. I'm your host, Carl Bird, filling in, representing at New Rhode Island Comic Con. Thank you for tuning in. I'm here with the legendary, yes, I called you legendary, the man, the famous writer for Black Panther for throughout the 90s, possibly early 2000s, Mr. Christopher Reeves. Thank you for the joining in. How are you doing, sir? Oh, great. I'm having a great time at uh, uh, here in Providence and uh, meeting a lot of great people and like guys like you. Yes. Is it, now, is this your first time in Providence? Not my first time in Providence. It's my, it's my first time in uh, at, at a uh, convention in Providence. Okay. So, yeah, um, I know we uh, we went to, you, uh, to your uh, Wakanda Then Now Forever um, panel, which was amazing, by the way. How did you uh, get into just writing for Black Panther? What made you, I, I don't know if it was your choice or not, to choose to write for Black Panther? Uh, they, well, Marvel approached me. Uh, Joe Casada, who is now the uh, 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 executive vice president at, at the Marvel, he uh, was running uh, the Marvel Knights imprint back in the 90s. And uh, he approached me about doing the, the Black Panther. And initially, I wasn't that enthusiastic about doing it. Uh, traditionally, black characters have not been big sellers. Uh, and it's always been a struggle to keep the book alive, like Power Man and Iron Fist or you know, Black Goliath or something like that. Um, and I was just tired of being put on books where uh, we're constantly under threat of ca- cancellation. Uh, but uh, Marvel Knights had a certain guarantee uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the launch issues were going to go at least a year. So uh, that kind of addressed some of my concerns about uh, the longevity of the book. Um, and then we had a few more conversations about uh, the substance of, the, of, of it, and, and uh, would I be ha- would I have a free hand to sort of recreate uh, Black Panther as the way I see him, so to have my own version of the character, or would I be bound to you know whatever had uh, occurred before? So I had a, fr- a fairly free hand mm-hmm. in uh, sort of recreating or reimagining the Black Panther. And, uh, and that was attractive to me. And, uh, you know, so it took us a couple of rounds before I got to a yes. But we did get there. Uh, that's amazing. So uh, what was your, uh, like, what was the, uh, how can I say, like the actual vision, if you can remember, of what, you know, what the story that you wanted to tell. And then how did, like, how did you want to interpret it, interpret your vision for Black Panther? Well, whether it's Black Panther or Iron Man or anything else, uh, my 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 main interest is in uh, creating what Stan Lee used to call the world outside your window, and what he meant by that is that he would ground his superheroes in the real world uh, as much as possible, which is what made Spider-Man unique, or which made uh, uh, you know Thor would come down from Asgard, and now we have this 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 uh, Norse god walking around on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. Uh, and that's what made it interesting is, is that he would juxtapose the uh, the 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 the, the uh, larger than life aspects against things that we're familiar with, Spider-Man on the subway, you know that kind of thing. Uh, so uh, rather than go straight to Wakanda, what I wanted to do was uh, do kind of what the film did. The film started in California, started in Los Angeles, or not in Los Angeles. Uh, what well, started in, in California. And uh, what I wanted to do was uh, bring Panther to to New York and kind of do a uh, coming coming to America, like Eddie Murphy's film Coming to America. My favorite. Uh, uh, and then uh, I wanted to, wanted to do something that would uh, address the sales resistance of Marvel's core audience, which is usually white males. So how do I write a love letter to white males? How do I entice them? To reading a story about a black monarch, a black African monarch, uh, so uh, that was that was the main challenge there was to just kind of go. I want to make him more dynamic, more interesting, more like Marvel's version of Batman, if you will, uh, uh, and, and without necessarily adding too much gadgetry or or or, or, or you know adding on these attributes. Uh, just go back to what Stan and Jack uh, Kirby had originally envisioned, which was a guy who was incredibly clever, resourceful, uh, a, a, an, an, an expert planner, an expert hand-to-hand combatant, but also a genius with technology, you know, and, bring, and package all that up, you know, in such a way uh, that it would become attractive to 
Marvel's core audience. Okay, so now you also here. I see here that you are credited for the creation of one of uh, Wakanda's beloved characters, Okoye. Can you tell us uh, what was the uh, cre- like what um I say like the creative process about that? Like, how what made you decide oh, this is a very interesting character? Like, what was your vision of Okoye from the get from the jump? Okay, so there's four characters in the film that I created. It was uh, Okoye. There's Nakia. Uh, uh, and there was uh, Zuri, the elder, uh, and there's uh, Everett K. Ross, the State Department guy. So Everett K. Ross was our point of our point of view character. He was the character that was critical to the launch of the Marvel Knights Black Panther because this is the character who gave voice to all the objections that white males might have to reading this book. And I read letter after letter, you know, emails that were sent in or, 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 or reviews online. Uh, where uh, uh, people were saying, you really got to read this book. You really got, no, 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 you really got to check out the Black Panther. You got to check the Black Panther out uh, based on Everett K. Ross, based on that character, because that character literally said a lot of things that white male fans probably were thinking but would not necessarily give voice to. Uh, As far as the Dora Milaje, the Dora Milaje is uh, a religious order. and they exist for a political purpose. Uh, most most countries in uh, continental Africa had been colonized either by the British or the Dutch or, or the French or whatever the story was. Uh, and as a result, even to this day, there's a great deal of infighting uh, between different tribal factions, different religious orders, that kind of thing. So within Wakanda, there's any number of tribes. Uh, and... Uh, the idea of the Dora Milaje was that uh, they would, each tribe would send a representative from each tribe to the capital, and uh, it would usually be a female. And these 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 uh, women would be like the, the the king's concomitants, which is kind of a PG version of concubine. So there's no uh, uh, sexual contact going on. There's nothing like that happening. Um, but these girls. Would, would would live within the, the the compound there and they would be the king's bodyguards the king's assistants you know that kind of thing um, and that was uh, uh, just an idea that, that Joe Casada and I came up with when we were developing uh, the book right. so okay obviously I have to touch on the movie that came out last year which is a big uh, I would say cultural hit yeah. you know within the black community would you um like, what was your reaction? I remember you saying during your panel that you did so. You mentioned to your uh, granddaughter yeah. about your influence on the movie, and then she had like a kind of <laughs> reaction, I believe. So, uh, can you tell us about that? And then, like, your um, tell us about like your influence that was on the that was in the movie. Okay, so uh, I, I was a, I was a consultant on the movie, or just I I was consulted before they start started uh, the production on the film. Um, and uh, on the Black Panther Blu-ray, there is a uh, in the supplements there is a uh, uh, a roundtable discussion that has uh, Ryan Coogler, uh, the director Ryan Coogler, uh, executive producer Nate Moore, uh, the writer uh, Robert Joe Cole, uh, the current writer of the Black Panther uh, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates. I'm a huge fan of uh, Absolutely, uh, myself, uh, Don McGregor, uh, who's sitting behind me. Uh, who created a, a, a great deal of the infrastructure that's refi- uh, featured in the film. And I screened that for, you know, my little eight-year-old friend here. And uh, uh, about two minutes into the uh, interview, she goes, this is so boring, you know. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really entertain eight-year-olds, I guess. But then I know, does it give you some type of, like, joy just knowing that, okay, I had something to do with this cult, pop culture phenomenon that possibly wouldn't have been made maybe about 20 years ago. Oh, oh, sure. It's, uh, can you pick me up over this? Okay. Uh, oh, sure. It's, 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 it's incredibly gratifying. It's, uh, I'm very grateful that, uh, to, to see, like, see something like that happen. It's just, uh, it's kind of phenomenal to see characters that you created walking around on the screen there. I, 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 I don't know what else to say about it. It was, it was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's truly amazing. So I know uh, you have left Marvel uh, some time back. Um, can you tell us what you have been up to uh, since then? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I know. 
I, I, I don't know that I, I don't think I would put it that way that I left Marvel um, it's just that uh, uh, s- several years ago uh, uh, I'm sorry I hope you can edit this I, I just can't even think when this guy's talking um, it's just that several years ago there was uh, uh, some things just happened at Marvel and, and a couple of series got cancelled and then they made some changes to series I was working on you know, and I just kind of got burnt out. I kind of got tired and uh, a little discouraged, and I just kind of dropped out of comics altogether. So it wasn't like I left Marvel. I, I stopped writing comics for anybody. And uh, I did a few things here or there for a couple of years. And then for a while, I was being offered work, but I was only being offered characters of color. And I had somehow become typecast as a quote-unquote black writer. And uh, I don't want to be a black writer. I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm a guy who built his career on Green Lantern, on uh, Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man Wolverine, on uh, Power Man, but Power Man and Iron Fist, uh, Quantum and Woody. Uh, when did I become this black writer where, I can, where I'm only allowed to write black characters? Uh, so it wasn't until uh, 2016 when DC Comics offered me Deathstroke. And uh, my first question was, is he black? And they said no. And I thought about it and went, Okay, I'm listening, you know. And we began a conversation about Deathstroke, and that's when I started uh, writing comics again. Okay. See, I see you're writing uh, Vampirella now. Yeah, Vampirella, was, Vampirella that was, that's a whole other story. That just uh, uh, Dynamite Publishing's, uh, uh, their publisher, Nick Barucci, just kind of stalked me for a while. And I, I didn't know what he wanted, but he kept, you know, calling and, and, and emailing. And, and so finally he, he got in his car and he drove, you know, like, two hours up to Connecticut to find me at a a convention somewhere and I was like okay what do you want and he says Vampirella and I went Vampirella and I I just had to stop in my tracks I hadn't really thought about why would I want to write Vampirella and then like uh, the second question is what could I say with that character uh, that hasn't been said or what could I do with the character that hadn't been done before Uh, and much like Deathstroke which I thought was an interesting challenge to try to flesh out Deathstroke I thought well Maybe I could do the same thing with Vampirella. Maybe I could uh, find some depth or some new direction that hasn't been explored with the character. Uh, so it's a little controversial for me. It's a little touchy for me just because of how, how upfront her sexuality is. Uh, but uh, so far it's been a, 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 a lot of fun to write. I'm very excited about the series. It's going very well. And it's like just, it's just, it's just wow, it's just a whole new thing for me so I'm very I'm very excited to be working on the book and very happy working on the book okay, well Mr. Christopher Priest thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule sure. for this interview thank you very much thank you everyone for tuning in to Codex Prime Code Extra <laughs>